Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that you too will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Bless be the name of the Lord. The person you may be ignoring may be your destiny helper. If I were you, I would do it again with every sense of honor and seriousness. Come on now, go ahead. Implicate yourself for good. Lord, we bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Please be seated. Great are you, Lord. Great. Just lift your hands and worship Him. Great are you, Lord. Strong and mighty in our midst. Great are you, Lord. Great time. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. We're going to pray tonight, so um, I'd like you to prepare your heart. Let me invite all those who are leaving from tomorrow for NYSC. Please come out quickly. Come and receive grace. Celebrate them and fresh grace. We're proud of you. We're proud of what God is doing. Celebrate them, Koinonia. This is the work of God. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 6. Verse 6. Then flew one of the seraphim unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongue 
from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Verse 8, and this is the call that God is giving every one of you. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I. Send me. Hallelujah. He said, Here am I. Send me. Father, in the name that is above all names, I stretch my hands upon your people. You have kept them. And David said, The God who gave the bear the God who gave the lion, he will also give this uncircumcised Philistine. There is a hand that lifted you. It will uphold you till the end. And you will not be afraid. This is a prophetic word to you. The Lord is your light. And he's the light of your life. You should not be afraid. The hand that guided you will uphold you till the end. You will not be afraid. For the grace that brought you through will uphold you till the end. And you will not be afraid. There is a voice that speaks for you. It will uphold you till the end. You will not be afraid. There is a seal that separates you. It will uphold you till the end. You will not be afraid. And you will go from faith to faith from glory to glory i prophesy to you and you will go from faith to faith from glory to glory and you forever be chasing after him. You be chasing after him all the days of your life. You forever be chasing after him. You be chasing after him. When it was time for David to face Goliath, Saul was so intimidated by the size of David, he said, I have extra weapons to give you. And David said, no, I was not taught with these weapons. It was not the javelin and all of this. There, there, there was a secret arsenal. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, that which you have been given is enough to make you great. Men will offer you all kinds of options. Anything that was not part of the tool for your training is not qualified to be with you in the day of battle. We want to pray. The race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. Many have come and failed woefully. But there is a hand that can take a man and sustain him. And Abraham gave Melchizedek a tent of all and Melchizedek blessed Abraham and said blessed be Abraham son of the most high possessor of the heavens and the earth the prophet said I have been instructed to bless 
and this I have done and it cannot be reversed in the name that is above all names may you be distinguished everywhere you go may there be an anointing upon your life that separates you out of the crowd because you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness let God even your God may he anoint you with an oil of gladness that makes you always above your fellows in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ And the Bible says Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped of the Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will receive the help of God. Where your strength fails, may the anointing upon you speak for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says they are taken for a prey and none see it restore. I send a prophetic word ahead of you that everything that wants to take you for a prey, let there be a prophecy that says restore in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says destroy it not for there is a blessing in it. I declare that as a result of the blessing of the Lord upon you, you become incorruptible in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who art thou mounting before Zerubbabel? He said, before Zerubbabel, thou shalt be made plain. I declare and I declare that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will do much for the kingdom. You will do much for the kingdom. Where there is no voice to speak for you, may you hear a voice from heaven that says, this is my beloved son, this is my beloved daughter, and may he command the world to hear you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak over your life. The Bible says. See I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. I pray that every territory you enter. Those powers in those territories remain subject to you forever. Because the Bible says, let every soul be subject to higher powers. And I speak over your life in the name that is above all names. Every devil of darkness submits to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, you shall not be afraid of the arrow that fly by day, nor the noisome pestilence. And that which wasted a noonday. He said, a thousand shall fall by your side. And 10,000 by your right side. But none shall harm you. With your eyes shall you watch and behold the reward of the wicked. I declare that you are preserved. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For his name is unto you a strong tower. And you will run and find refuge. In the name of Jesus I declare. May you suck honey out of the rock. And may your feet be honored and adorned with butter in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for you. Let your hand be strengthened by the Lord Most High. May the Lord amplify your efforts. He told Abraham, lift up your eyes and see. He said, for as far as your eyes can see, I have given it unto you. I declare, although you will go to a foreign land, I speak to the earth of that territory to bring out his good and give to you. He said, I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. Isaiah 48 says that I am the Lord that teacheth thy hands to profit. I command that these hands will profit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just like Daniel through the dispensation of three kings, he was exalted. May you be exalted. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I activate Breakthrough in your life through the ministry of destiny helpers. Whoever needs to hold your hands to go to the next level, may my God bring them into your life. And the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. Whoever needs to send for you, I prophesy in the name that is above all names. I activate the ministry of the wine pressers and the bakers. May they recommend you in high places. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? Where your qualification cannot take you, like Mephibosheth, may you still sit and dine with kings. The Bible
Bible says, Gentiles shall come to your light and their kings to the brightness of your rising. He said, your gates shall be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. The Bible says, where you have been deserted so that no man goes through you, you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I declare, in the name of the Lord Jesus, you will not backslide, you will not lose this that you for the Bible says, they that be planted in the house of God, they will flourish in the courts of our God. He said, even in old age, they will be fat and flourishing. You will be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water. When others are waiting for rainy season, you are planted by a permanent source of supply. And the Bible says, as a result, you will yield its fruit in season, and its leaf will not wither. Whatever he doeth prospers. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let the mark of God be upon you, that everyone that sees you will know that God is with you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I strengthen your hands. May God trust you with wealth. May God trust you with grace. May God trust you with leadership. In the name of Jesus Christ, and we cause death over your life. That which terminates the life of people prematurely, you are separated from it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bless you. Let the favor and the grace upon this house go with you. Any door that has opened for this house, may it open for you. In the name of Jesus, when God blesses us here, may he bless you wherever you are. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, go and do mighty things for the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. Congratulations. God bless you. Please, Koinonia, celebrate them. Go and do great things for the kingdom. And let us hear of the exploits you are doing. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, Sing it one more time. Yeah. First Corinthians chapter 15. Tonight is a powerful time in the spirit. First Corinthians chapter 15. The Bible says, that which I speak to you, I declare to you in the secret place. He said, declare thou upon the mountain top. 1 Corinthians 15, from verse 54. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 54. Everyone look up, let's just read. So when this corruptible shall have put on him corruption, and this mortal shall put up immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Verse 55. Can we read it together? One to read. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Tonight we are challenging the spirit of death. I will share with you what the Lord revealed to me. We are going to pray. Are you getting my point now? The Bible says the sons of Issachar, they had an understanding of the times and they knew what to do. It is a tragedy for a believer not to be able to read the signs of the world and see what is happening. If we lack the perception, the ability 
to align with what the spirit is doing, we can cut short our lives without knowing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh death, where is your sting? No grave, where is your victory? Tonight I'm teaching very briefly on victory over the spirit of death. And then we're going to pray. We have quite some prayers to do. I don't, we're not going to stay long, but we're going to pray. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like you to pray. And say, Lord, open my eyes tonight. Open my eyes. Shila Baba Rada Baladada. Open our eyes to God in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the responsibilities of a true apostolic ministry is not just to change people but to be able to bring territories under the obedience of the Lordship of Christ. Are you getting my point now? A true apostolic ministry has a mandate to become a voice not just to people but to speak over territories and enforce obedience to the word of God to the ways of the spirit let me show you something Isaiah 42 this is what happens when any territory lacks a true apostolic voice and I'm not just talking about people who call apostles this apostle that no I'm talking of certain people that truly have been elected by grace when a territory lacks true apostolic voices that can be able to speak and command things to comply. 42 verse 22. Let's read 21 and 22. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. Verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of themselves snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are taken for a prey and none delivered them. For a spoil and there is no voice that proclaims restore. It says these people are captured. They are taken for a prey. And for as long as there is no voice that can challenge darkness and say restore, those people will remain in captivity. Tonight we have come to pray. We have come to speak and say restore. It says they are taken for a prey and there is none that is able to deliver them. They are taken for a spoil. You know what a spoil is? The proceeds of war. The seal of victory in a war. That every time you spoil a territory, you take the kings and their gold and their treasure. You take it back. You cut the head of the king and hang it and take it as a symbol of your victory. They are called spoils of war. 
And the Bible says when there are no apostolic voices in territories, when men are kept in prison houses, when they are taken for a prey, there is none that cries deliverance unto them. It says, and when they are taken for a spoil, there is none that says a storm. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. Listen, before we talk about death, let me challenge you a, a little. Hold on. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. The word of God can be trusted. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you do not believe the word of God, you are absolutely disadvantaged in this system. Many of us want to trust the word of God but we keep asking ourselves what is the guarantee that this word will not fail me because we are used to men failing us we are used to systems failing us and as a result of that it becomes difficult especially in the face of all of the things that happen there's death everywhere unrest, insurgency and violence sicknesses and pestilence and all of these things. But Solomon said there is nothing that is new under the sun. Meaning it has happened before. Recession has happened before. Are you getting my point? War and crime and killing and wickedness. The reign of evil has happened before. Everything that happens now has happened before. And the Bible says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Let me just use a few minutes to help us and strengthen our assurance about the immutability of the word of God. Can we look at that just for a few minutes? You need to trust God's word. This is the sure foundation for faith. Not just faith that has to do with just talking, talking. No, 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 no authentic Bible faith that is able to produce results. Let's look at the scripture. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13. We'll just rush. I'm talking about death, but as I began to prepare for this, God put it in my heart again and again that many people are beginning to have a second thought about the word of God. Especially in light of the fact that certain ills and evil seems to be prevailing unhindered. Hallelujah. And so many people are beginning to ask themselves, is the word of God really reliable? Can it really bail me in death? Can it bail me under wicked conditions? I hear the chains falling. First Thessalonians 2 verse 13. We we'll have to be very fast. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Because when we received what? The word of God which he had of us. We received it not as the word of men. But as it is in truth. The word of God. Which effectually worketh also in you. Not that as you. We received it not, although it was taught by a man, it was taught by a minister, but we received it not just as a word of a man, we received it in truth that this is the word of God. Hallelujah. Do you believe that the word of God is able to deliver, to save, to bless? 
Let's talk about this word of God for a few minutes. Psalm 33 verse 6. I wrote down a few scriptures to just encourage us. Can we really trust in the word of God? Can I stake my life on the word of God? How far can I go with the word of God? Can it stop me from dying? Can it stop me from pestilence and wickedness? By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. And all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. It says the heavens were created. They were framed out of the word of God. The Bible declares in John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. That everything we see in the universe came from God. John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. It says in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. Right? And the word was God. He said he was with God in the beginning. Verse 2. And the same was with God in the beginning. Verse 3 now. He says, and how many things? How many things? All things were made by him. That word. And without him was not anything made. That means without it, nothing can be made in your life. Without the word. All things were made by the word of God. Hebrews 11 verse 3, don't turn there. It says, through faith we understand. We were not there, but by faith we were told by the Holy Ghost. That the walls were framed by the word of God. The Bible says, through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which appear. In other words, these material things. The unit of them is the word of God. Not just atoms and molecules. Everything in the universe was framed by the word of God. Hebrews 1 verse 3. One of my most powerful scriptures about the word of God. The Bible says he upholds all things. Hebrews what? Am I right? Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of the person. And upholding all things by what? By the word of his power. Watch this. It's one thing to manufacture this. But it's another thing to keep it standing. The Bible says the word of God did not just bring it into existence. The word of God is the factor that keeps it moving. He upholds everything. Everything, the sun, the moon, balancing the equilibrium of nature is all balanced by the word of his power. So he upholds your life, not by circumstances that happen, but by the word of his power. The Bible says all things. He upholds all things by the word of his power. Psalm 89 verse 34. Very powerful scripture. Psalm 89 verse 34. Is the word of God reliable? What is the guarantee behind the word of God? Everyone read. Want to read. My covenant will I not break. Nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. This is God speaking. He said my covenant. I will not break it. I will not alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. Oh, hallelujah. Gives us confidence. Gives us confidence. Gives us confidence. My covenant will I not break. Men can do all of this, but I have, I have entered a covenant with myself because there is no man greater than me. So I entered a covenant with myself and I will not break. I will not alter the thing that has gone forth. God will not break his word, brothers and sisters. You must be assured of this. It is the guarantee that helps us to trust the word. God cannot lie. Numbers 23 verse 19. Numbers 23 verse 19. Powerful scripture. Very, very, very powerful scripture. Numbers 23. Everyone read. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said 
and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? He said, God is not a man. That means it's okay when men tell lies. It's part of their predicament. But God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should change his mind over what he has spoken concerning your life. Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 16 to 18. The last scripture. I just want to encourage us tonight. Because you see, sometimes many of us really think and we can be tempted to think that believers are just faking these things. It really doesn't work. It's just that people are trying and let's see how far it goes. Hebrews 6 from verse 16. For men verily swear by the greater and an oath of confirmation is to them an end of strife. Next verse. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto who? Us. According to Galatians 2.29. 3.29 says, And if ye be Christ, then are ye what? Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So he said, Willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. Next verse. That by two immutable things, which it was impossible. Do you know what impossible means? Impossible means if by mistake God calls this guy a woman, he must change to a woman because God cannot lie. It's not that he does not. Even if he speaks by mistake. That was why when Balaam, listen, listen. When the prophet was called to go and curse Israel, he said, I have been commanded to bless. I have already spoken it. I cannot take it back again. When Esau came and said, is there no blessing left? Isaac said, it's too late. Something has left me because I was representing God. What is it about? Can you not just say, okay, son, I bless you. What was he talking about? He said, everything that is there, I have given it. So where is the blessing? Is it, a, is it just that he died on his son? That another person comes to say, please bless me. He says it's too late. He was not just talking of, I bless you, I bless you. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Cause he will give up on you. He's able. Listen, let me tell you something about God. Every time God wants to speak, the first thing he examines is his ability, whether he can do it or not. God will never say anything he cannot do. It's only men that talk can say, I'll build you a house. Tomorrow in the afternoon, come and collect the key of the house. That's a man talking. But when God speaks, that was why when the prophet said, by this time tomorrow, he was speaking as an oracle. And the one who the king leaned on said, are you kidding? Because he thought God was a man. And he said, really, you will see it. But you will never eat of it. Brothers and sisters, I want to encourage us. If we think God is playing pranks with us, and God is joking, have you read in this Bible that hailstones came from heaven? Have you read from this Bible that lepers, four lepers were running and they had the sound. It was a multiplied effect. Have you heard that people entered fire and it did not destroy them? Question. It's not just yes. Do you believe? Because the Bible says Jesus is the same. Yesterday. Today. I'm about to teach on something very powerful, very briefly, and then we'll pray. But it's going to be a waste if you think God is playing games with you. I know that God is too serious to allow Jesus Christ to die on the cross. Is that a joke? The Bible says, He that did not spare his only son, but offered him freely, shall he not with him give us what? All things, not some things. 
after I believe the word of God. See, this is the, this is the true foundation of faith that lasts. Not this emotionalism that people are doing in the body of Christ. This is the foundation of true faith. Hallelujah. I had a vision in the course of the week. And I saw the map of Africa. And all of a sudden, I saw like a serpent. And it was moving across it. And the Lord told me, I had that, this scripture. They are taken for a prey. And none saith restore. Hallelujah. When God shows me things like this, it's because He wants us to act. Hallelujah. And then the Lord began to tell me how that death looms across the continent of Africa and even in the nation of Nigeria. It, uh, listen, 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 listen. There is death, there is the event of death that the Bible calls sleeping. Is that true? We just call it sleeping. That's not what I'm talking about. Because according to scripture, those who sleep, those who die in Christ, Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die. He was not talking about oppression of the spirit of death. Well, that's why I, did, I didn't write victory over death. Because I want you to understand what I'm sharing. Victory over the spirit of death. Say amen. Immediately I saw this. I said, ah, it's because of something very, very prophetic that God is doing in our nation. I've been announcing this all through different meetings and different conferences. And if this death is not stayed, there will be many casualties. But tonight, my goal is to demystify this thing called death. Because I tell you, when the Lord, in this vision that the Lord was showing me, I could feel fear. Believers have been captured by the spirit of fear. Pastors, leaders, apostles, prophets. The Bible says they are taken for a prey and none see it restored. Hallelujah. Said these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Israel, against Jerusalem. So that no man will lift up his head. He said, but I have sent carpenters. Hallelujah. Is someone getting what I'm saying now? The spirit of death. He said, Oh death, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? The first thing I want you to know about the spirit of death is that it is a spirit. It is a demon spirit. Please, brothers and sisters, don't let anyone confuse you. Look up, please. Look up. Many of us here have lost loved ones. Some of them have actually gone resting. It was their due season. It was their time. But can I tell you something? There are many people whose exit out of this earth realm is as a result of being victims of the claws and the pangs of death. And we must, we must contend and refuse. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is very important. When the Lord showed me this vision, I was very, very touched. And I knew that God wanted us to begin to speak and to open the body of Christ to the revelation that will sustain them in power. And now, I'm not one person who likes talking and announcing miracles and all of that. I like the things to happen and let the people just hear by themselves. But something happened very striking in the course of the week. A lady was in ICU. We hope that when she's done, she will come to testify. Hallelujah. And the lady was under some heavy gadgets and all of that. And then eventually she gave up the ghost. When she died, they were calling me, calling me and said, this lady had died. Everything was over. She was packed up. And then I told the lady that was talking to me, listen please. I told her, I said, put the phone in the dead lady's ears. Just make contact with her ears. And she put the phone and I say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I knock on the door of life and I bring back her spirit to her body. Nothing happened right away. We off the phone. Brothers and sisters, this is verified. It happened in Asokoro just a few days ago. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, 
from nowhere this girl sneezed back to life and started when she sneezed listen 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 that's not even the testimony when she sneezed back to life after some hours she started shouting my name in the hospital and she was shouting and she asked them to she said why did you stop me this was her testimony listen she said when she was going to the gate she just found herself in a place of course for those of you who have read divine revelation books you know and she saw several people coming from the earth realm and it was her time and she was going approaching and someone was it's like people were going to the gates you know the pearly gates that the bible talks about and while she was there she could hear from the earth that they are praying it's like people were praying different people and then she said the moment she was there the next thing she had a loud shout and it was my voice i was called it was like a magnetic force it was pulling her back and she was saying no i don't want to go back and then the angel she would enter the gate and the angel said can you not hear that he's calling you we cannot allow you come listen this is a truth she's going to come here and testify that can you not hear and then he told her that it's not your time return back and truly when she spoke it was the exact time that i was praying for her hallelujah this girl listen that's not even the testimony she she came back to life with such a dramatic presence she was blasting in tongues when the nurse and the doctors came the power of god came upon the nurse instantly right there listen the doctor was so intimidated he left and the nurse was there the, the lady who was talking with her called and said i want to give my life to christ this lady was speaking utterly mysteries because she came back with an experience i mean her bed was vibrating she was vibrating i sent the text to a few of the leaders this is how you know that i for me it was a confirmation the the goal is not okay dead race and all of that thank god for all of those things but for me it was a confirmation and then guess what happened the lady said one of the doctors came and looked at her and he said be careful and then when she was sleeping in the night one of the doctors came to her in the spirit to kill her in the hospital are you getting my point now and then she began to pray and then in the morning he came and confronted them told her and said listen you have not seen anything yet the lady that put her ears huh, that put the phone in the ear of the dead girl was just going to get privileges and return and a car from their back just smashed that girl and i heard she died in the afternoon can you imagine are you seeing that evil is real for standing to make sure somebody did not die our hospitals have now become occultic places In my life, death has tried me many times. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So don't you think I'm just talking nonsense? From birth, the devil wanted to take my life. I didn't have the privilege of enjoying breast milk. He stabbed me. Let's even start from that one. Praise God. I've been diagnosed of all sorts and I've seen the hand of God. Are you getting my point? I have met with armed robbers on the way. Car has jammed me once. So don't think I'm just talking rubbish. Death is a spirit. Tonight, we will rest this issue of death once and for all. Rome, Revelation chapter 6. 
Mamprotashi la bakaraga baladabes. Revelation chapter 6. What is this mysterious phenomenon called death that can scare any man, scares the rich, scares the poor? Accidents, infirmities, incurable diseases, acts of wickedness and terrorism, all kinds of things that just brutally exit people out of this earth. Is there a way out? Revelations. Verse 8. Verse 7. Let's start from verse 7. Verse 7. Please read. And when he had opened the fourth seal, these were the, the riders upon the four horse. Are you getting my point? I heard the voice of the first beat and he said what? Come and see. Next verse please. And I looked, and I behold, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was what? So this mysterious spirit that has been responsible for the premature exiting of people is not just a phenomenon. The Bible tells us that he's a real spirit. He sits upon a horse, and he does not walk alone. Hell followed him. I told you hell is a spirit. Are you seeing it there in your Bible? <laughs> hmm. And power was given unto them over a fourth part of the earth. So how does death manifest? It kills with what? Are you seeing now? Sword is the manifestation of that spirit. And he uses a word again. Hunger. It is still the same spirit. And number three, what you now call death. He named the event after himself. And then the fourth part he said, and with the beasts. You know who the beasts are in the earth? He's not just talking of wild animals. This is the terrorism and all of these things he's called. He said, and with the beasts of the earth. They are all the manifestation of how this spirit operates. Are you getting my point now? Remember, Paul was saying he was confronted by beasts and wild animals. Right? He, didn't, he said, although he was not just talking of literal animals, he meant these, those who were opposing the cause of Christ. And so he said, this is how this spirit, he sits upon a horse and sends all of these things as envoys. Hunger, the sword, manifestations of beasts and everything. But the Bible says he sat upon a pale ox and his name is what? Death. You must understand that death is a spirit. Brothers and sisters, accidents, incurable diseases, all of these devilish, dangerous things. As common as they look, they are the vehicles through which this spirit operates. Please get this. I know that many of us, some of us have buried our loved ones. Some of us have been victims of all of these things. Don't worry. Just listen to the word of the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please understand that nothing just happens in this realm. If you can believe this, this is your first deliverance tonight. Nothing. A car does not just jam people, brothers and sisters. At every given point in a man's life, he's been influenced by a spirit. There is nothing like neutral. Please hear me. You are either under the influence of the spirit of God or some influence of demon spirit. Is someone getting what I'm saying? When a man says he's an atheist, for instance... That in itself is a manifestation of the spirit of deception. Hallelujah. Everybody shout it. Nothing just happens. Say it again. Nothing just happens. Jesus was giving us an interesting parable. And he said, while men slept. Right? While men slept, he said something happened. An enemy came. 
and sow tears among the wheat and left. So that you lie down to sleep. Fine and sound. And then by morning you wake up with a lump. Question. In how many hours did the lump just get up? What sponsored it that it grew more than the normal growth of the body? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now the Ebola virus and all those devilish things manufactured and fabricated from hell. Right? This is not the first time that devilish virus is coming to the earth. It had come during John Lake's time and John Lake stamped it to his feet and it went back and he says, let's try again. After many years, and let's see whether there are still ambassadors. I tell you the truth, there are still ambassadors. John Lake, that was the plague that was killing people. And John Lake said, what, what in the world is this? Let's go to the microscope. And he ended that issue once and for all. The earth is becoming more interesting. Are you getting my point? The earth is becoming more interesting because there is, there is an open confrontation of darkness. The Bible says kingdoms will rise against kingdoms. For it is they that know their God. <laughs> they shall be strong. Not they that have heard about him. Not they that preach him. They that have paid the price to know their God. They shall be strong and they shall do exploits. In the name of the Lord Jesus. So death is a spirit. Very quickly. Is there a way out. Of the grip of this devil. And this spirit. That's what tries to come to take. Many people's life in the night. Many people. Have you wondered. Excuse me. Have you wondered why people die in the night. Have you wondered why women. Make loose children in the night. Why not in the day. The mystery of the night. Hallelujah. And I tell you, there is a visitation of the spirit of death over the nation of Nigeria. I know it. I have seen it. It's looming across territories. Mysterious accidents. Mysterious rage and violence. The Bible says they are taken for a prey. And there is no voice. We are busy trying to raise money in our churches. We are trying to buy suits. The devil has distracted us, men of God. We are trying to buy new cars. And the devil tells the demons, keep distracting them. While death keeps wiping people. And for as long as it has not touched us, this is the same spirit that manifested in the days of Esther. Esther was enjoying in the palace. She did not know that God took her to the palace so that she will be a voice that will cry, restore. She was the apostolic voice in that dispensation. And the Bible says, when Mordecai, who was a watchman, sitting by the gates, he said, I will stand upon my watch, Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower so that I will see what the Lord will say. There are no watchmen again in this country. We have lost the art of sensitivity. We have lost it to food. We have eaten the food of idols and the king's meat. A little sleep, the Bible says. A little slumber. A little folding of the hands. And poverty comes upon you like an armed band. This is what has happened to the church. We have been stripped and robbed. And we are being distracted because of the bounty. I believe in prosperity. But not at the expense of that which the Spirit of God is doing. For as long as we are in our various churches and cathedrals and we feel we are secured and there are, there are many men of God who do not believe in the Bible. It's just that they have a lot of security and they don't go around anyhow. Right? But there are so many people who are dying, who have stood face to face and they applied the messages that we preach and it didn't work and they died. And they keep saying, don't worry, who is deceiving who? There's got to be something authentic. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Why will I not talk of faith and courage 
when there are all kinds of bodyguards following and all kinds of security people and your car is a bulletproof car who will not have faith under that circumstance and your flight is a private one and everything listen 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 to me listen to me god will judge any man of god and any pastor who does not commit himself to teach believers truth right and to stand in the place of intercession and prayer and to shout restore it's not only about collecting the tithe of god's people and telling them so seeds and do this and then the moment they keep dying like chickens the bible says they are taken for a prey and there is no voice to say restore is someone hearing what i'm saying death is a spirit i like everybody to say it. death is a spirit say it again death is a spirit if you know that death is a spirit you will know that it's not a mysterious phenomenon that just comes listen i travel all the time i have i have i have in my little life i don't know only god will tell only when we get to heaven I will have the privilege of seeing the amount of poisons I have eaten in my life. One. Two. Only God knows the enchanters that speak spells every day concerning my life. You don't know? You want to be a man of God? You make impact and think the devil will fold his arms to watch. Never forget praying for one lady one time during Koinonia, um, during the counseling. And, and the spirit just shouted and said, Joshua, you, you. You know, just warning and all of that. Day and night, brothers and sisters, there are enchantments against the people of God. And so if you do not know where you stand, one outing you can leave and not return. But let me tell you something. The Bible says the first Adam was made a quickening soul. But the second Adam has been made not a life-giving spirit. Not a life-possessing spirit. You have so much of that life. It is within your power to dispense it. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. How do you enforce your victory over this spirit of death? Especially in this day and age. Please write it down. There are principles. It doesn't happen by magic. Victory over the spirit of death. Number one, realize that in Christ, if you are born again and you have given your heart to Jesus Christ genuinely, the Bible says in Ephesians 2 verse 1 that we are above. Everybody say, I'm above. I don't know how to make you believe it, but say, I am above. Say it again, I am above. It's a spiritual location. Ephesians 2 verse 1. So realize that you are from above. Hallelujah. It says, and you are sick, quickened, who were dead in your trespasses and sin. Verse 2. Wherein in time past, this and that and that and that, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. Verse 3. Okay, let's, let's just run. Look for that part that says we have been exalted above. That's where I'm looking for. Verse what? Six. Six, please. Let's just run down. Let's save time. And he had raised who? Everybody say us. That means not just Christ alone. The Bible says in the curse we identified with him. Is that true? By the mystery of the Holy Communion. Is that true? We entered into him. And so because we partook of the sufferings of Christ, we also partake of the glory that follows. Are you getting my point now? And the Bible says, when he was raised up, we were raised up together with him. And he has made us to what? Sit in heavenly places. That's an exact spiritual location. Next verse. Ephesians 1. Everybody say, I've been raised up with Christ. And I'm seated with him. Far above. Say it again, far above. 
far above accidents, far above death. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, say it to far above accidents, far above terrorism, far above death, far above wickedness. Hallelujah. Yes, I believe this with all my heart. I'm going to show you a powerful scripture when we're ready to pray. He said, which he wrote in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Uh, is that it? Anyway, let's, let's save time. 21. Oh, yes. Far above what? Principalities. How many of them? And power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this world, because there are names in other worlds too that help people in this world. So he said, every name, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Say, I'm far above. Oh, hallelujah, I'm far above. Far above every devil. Far above every enchantment. Every act of witchcraft. Just pray it in one minute. I'm far above. I'm far above. I don't live by the sword. I won't die by the sword. I'm far above. Just pray in one minute and we'll sit down and continue. Mambra teke parada balada. No, not a victim of accident. No, not a victim of bomb blast. By the mighty hand of God. Shekete baba baba. Shake out fear from your life. My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone forth from out of my mouth. I'm far above, far above in the name of Jesus, far above thrones, far above covens, far above witchcraft. The Bible says it. I believe it. Jesus is Lord of my life. This word is true in my life. I'm far above. I don't doubt it. I'm far above. I'm far above. Hallelujah. So that's the first revelation you must have. If you must conquer the spirit of death. I'm far above. Oh, hallelujah. Let them cast their spells. Far above. Far above. Make all the enchantments. I will go out and come back safe. I'm far above. In the mighty name of Jesus. I am far above. Man take a labor for Far above. Death is a rider upon a horse. But I am far above. Hallelujah. Number two. <laughs> Hebrews chapter two from verse nine. Then we move to 14 and 15. Let me show you something powerful. Brothers and sisters, when a thing is a mystery in your life, it can confuse you. But when you unlock the mysteries, there is no confusion there again. Poverty was once as dangerous as death until men found out that there is an exact formula. And today they teach it with audacity. Is because many people have not studied the concept of death and life. And they have not been able to prove to the body of Christ. The same way men fear death. That's how they fear demons. Is that true? That's how they fear poverty. Until certain people say, let's enter this thing and find out. And they entered and came out. They said, there's nothing here. But we see Jesus. Hebrews 2. Verse 9. Who was made a little lower than the angels of the... For what? The suffering of death. This is Jesus paying the price. Crowned with glory and honor. That he by the grace of God should do what? Should do what? Read your Bible. Should do what? 
first death for who? Every man. The, this is your Bible. This is, that's why I started by saying, do you believe it? That means, once and for all, Jesus offered himself that the spirit of death will afflict him. Once for every man. It's not talking about sleeping. No. Jesus died a brutal death. That was the spirit of death. But he allowed it once so that no man would be buffeted by this nonsense again. The Bible says it. He tasted it. He tasted it. He tasted the sting of death. Are you getting my point? That was why when he was about to resurrect, those gates of death in, in Psalm 24 said, who is this king of glory that wants to come back? No, when we close the door, you cannot come back again except somebody in this realm calls you who wants to call himself back. He tasted death. He tasted death. He tasted death. I believe this with all my heart. See, it is the truth you know that will make you free. Not the truth you have heard about. It is not the light that rises that makes you arise. It is the one that comes to you. Arise, shine, for your light has come. It has always been there, but it will never work until it comes to you. He said, and the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. Let's look at verse 14. Ah, I love the word of God. Everybody read. For as much as ye are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had what? The power of death, that is the devil. Through death he passed through it, so that he will destroy the power, the devil and his power. Remember in Revelation, he said power was given to that spirit. Verse 15. Everyone read. And deliver them who through the word stop. Not through who through death. Through the fear. There is a terror. There is a spirit. That's why every time wickedness is happening, the spirit of fear always precedes it. To make people afraid. When a habal is saying three days, you will not leave. He's releasing the spirit of fear. The fear of death. Where all their lifetime subject to what? This is what is going on. You can't go out in the morning because you are afraid. What if this car has an accident? What if the plane crashes? What if the luxurious just... What if, what if, what if? Hi! Let me tell you. Brothers and sisters, do you believe what I'm sharing with you? You take this word as true? And deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. The fear of death brings bondage. Some of you are supposed to have traveled. You can't travel. Because you are wondering, the car. Number three, realize that death has been defeated. Revelations 1 verse 18. Revelations 1 verse 18. Please, let's rush. Revelations 1 verse, 7, verse 18. Please just write it and then we'll read it quickly. One to read. This is Jesus speaking. I am he that liveth and was what? Dead. And behold, I am alive forever. Amen. And I have the keys. Is that in your Bible? I have the keys. In other words, it is within my power to control its operation. I have the keys. Please realize this. I'm building up a revelation. So we see that he tasted death and he has the keys. We're going to find out where that key is today. Because he was talking to the churches. 
talking to John and then to the church. He said, I have the keys. First Corinthians 15 verse 55. The scripture we saw. How can a spirit terrorize nations? Terrorize people? Oh death! Where is your sting? It likens the way death takes people to the sting of a scorpion. So he said, I have given you authority over snakes and scorpions. Scorpions that sting. He said, oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, you have been boasting that any man you take must enter. Where is now your victory? There are people who have defied the power of the devil. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Number four. How do you enforce your victory? You must apply the blood of Jesus by faith. Now I'm teaching you how to make it work in your life. Exodus chapter 12, please. Verse 7 and then 12 to 14. Please, let's hurry up. Exodus chapter 12. Moses showed us this revelation. Everyone look up. Now, hold on. Can you see that this is not the first time the spirit of death is passing over regions? Is that true? It has happened many times. And you can exempt yourself and your loved ones first. And then stand to speak over others. You cannot give what you do not have. Is that true? And they shall take up the blood and strike it on the two sides of the post. And on the upper door post of the house wherein they shall eat it. Verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. And smite the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt I will execute vengeance. I am the Lord. 13. And the blood shall be unto you. What? A token. A sign. A symbol. A, an indication. For when I see the blood. I will pass over you. And what? The plague. The plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. What's the name of that virus again? Huh? Ebola virus. And the plague, the Bible calls it a plague. It said, it shall not be upon you because it comes to destroy. It shall not be upon you. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. I have prayed for too many people to contract communicable disease if I was faking what I'm telling you. Are you getting my point? It's easy to pray for people in a distance. But when you lay hands on people and you are breathing on people, I do this everywhere I go. I would have caused all kinds of things like that. The last time I went for a medical checkup, the doctor was surprised. See, the Bible says... We, it says we are not, how did he put it? We have not brought to you cunningly devised fables. If you don't believe this thing, it will show in your life one day. And it will become obvious. But truly you will not know. Hallelujah. Verse 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And you shall keep the feast. What feast? You shall keep this mystery of the application of the blood. It's not an Old Testament concept. To the Lord throughout your generation. He says you shall keep the feast in an ordinance. When? Are you seeing it now? It didn't say it will expire. The mystery of the operation of the blood to bring deliverance and to secure you. It's a mystery that had been there even before Jesus died. And the Bible says it is an ordinance that you will keep if you are interested in living. Are, are you getting what I'm saying now? So you must plead the blood. And there are three ways to plead the blood. Number one, in prayers. When you pray, you plead that blood. 
as the price. The blood not only saves, it delivers, it protects. You plead the blood in prayers. Hallelujah. Number two, by the mystery of the communion. The mystery of the communion. The cup, the body, and the cup. He says, for this cause, many of you take it unworthily. And some of you are sick. Some of you are weak. And some of you do sleep. Number three. The mystery of the blood of sprinkling. Hallelujah. He said you shall sprinkle it upon your walls. And upon every of these things. Three scriptural ways of engaging the power of the blood. To bring us victory. Let's hurry up. The last way. Or the last way of enforcing your victory is through the authority and power that is conferred in the name of Jesus. I like this one. Goodness. One of my best scriptures, Luke 10, 19, please. I'm about to jump up right now. Hmm. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain to break every chain behold see conceive it as a reality that I have given you I give you. The word there is not power like dunamis. It's the word exousia. I give you authority. The authority that comes with my office. I give it to you. To tread upon serpents. Scorpions. And over how many? All the powers of the enemy. This is the best part of the verse. And nothing shall by any means you went to school. Brothers and sisters, what is the meaning of by any means? Whether it is by your mistake, whether it is by your lack of prayer, what by any means, if you stand in this office, I stake my reputation that when it comes to protecting you, nothing shall by any means. There are different means it can come through. Your carelessness, Right? Your miss. I, I teach you a secret of spiritual immunity. You will walk through challenges that are killing others by a mystery that you will never be able to understand. He said, nothing, nothing, nothing. It is on the strength of this scripture. The Bible says, surely they shall gather. But because their gathering is not of the Lord, they shall scatter. He said, they will come to you in one way and scatter in seven ways. Behold, I give you authority. Exousia. While I was in the earth, there was authority that was given to me. And by reason of that authority, forces bowed. They didn't bow because my name was called Jesus. They bowed because of this authority. Are you getting my point now? And the Bible says, Philippians chapter 2, from verse 10, it says, Wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name. What is in a name? It's an office. Jesus is not just the name of a person. The word Lord, see, listen. It said, God gave him a name. The name is not Jesus. I hope you know. I hope you know. No, the name is not Jesus. We call Jesus because it was the name of the person that stood in that office. Let's read on verse 10. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and of things in heaven and in earth and things under the earth. Next verse, please. And that every tongue should confess that that Jesus has entered this office called Lord. That's the name. 
That's the name. Lord, Master, Absolute Controller. And the Bible says whoever. That's why the Bible said the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. The world's and they. It was the revelation. It was the coronation service that the psalmist saw. So he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit down at the right hand until I make your enemies. He never mentioned Jesus there. He said, the Lord, the absolute control of the universe, now said to my Lord, who got it by conquest, sit down. And the Bible says, whoever enters this office, some things will start becoming possible. Are you getting my point? In Mark chapter 16, he said, this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, in this office, Haya, he said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Whoever carries this office becomes a controller, becomes a mysterious commander. Listen, if I cannot make it for Koinonia or I, there is a program and they keep a seat here, right? And they say this seat is for um, maybe the president or the pastor somewhere, right? And I call Yinka and I say, Yinka, I cannot make it, but I send you with my name. Are you seeing that? What they are interested in is not the personality. It is the office. The moment he comes, listen, if he can donate 5 million, whether I like it or not, everybody say whoever occupies this office. That's why SSG, the secretary of the federal government will go and represent good luck. And they will say, and the president said, every presidential car you see presidency. It doesn't mean Asso Rock. That means the collection of the people that are in this office. I hear the chains falling. You will only confront death when you stand in this office and say, Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, great, that vicious devil that will make a driver lose control and maim and destroy people. Where is your sting? Listen, the patriarchs of old were men of war. They fought war from birth till they died. Yet they were not afraid of the sword. It's not like our own that periodically it comes. They were born and bred in war. David was a man of war. I hear the chains falling. I come in that name. He sent me as an ambassador. Oh, I believe it. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. An ambassador is one who has been sent. 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 Here, lost born, saw so many miracles in his crusades. And when he stands on the crusade ground, he says, do you believe in Jesus? And they say, yes. He says, he sent me. He sent me to this crusade. To tell you your sins are forgiven. He sent me to declare, I'm speaking to you, that in that office your sins are forgiven. Now, then, we are what? Ambassadors. Envoys. Representatives. With the full backing of heaven. The full backing. The Bible says... As my father has sent me, the same way he equipped me, the same way he was there for me, that I could call on a legion of angels. Brothers and sisters, this is not about being a man of God. This is your positional advantage. This is really the revelation of what we call new creation realities. Hallelujah. So you realize, Death is a spirit. It's not omnipresent. It operates through a network of wicked devils. But it's a spirit. 
and the revelation that you know translates into light and when that death sees you because light cannot darkness cannot stand light so they shall take up deadly things and it shall not hurt them they shall pass an environment that has Ebola virus and rather than destroying them it will be a blessing for those who are infected because you come in the power look let me tell you brothers and sisters the Bible says before the, the great and terrible day of the Lord Elijah will appear again you know who Elijah was Elijah is the spirit of the prophetic is a true apostolic spirit that will challenge anything that is not God hallelujah it's important what you believe it's important what you believe say I refuse to fear say it I refuse to fear you must kill fear from your life brothers and sisters people do not just die and you know hold on if it's just death that many people are afraid of do you know there is a state that you'll be alive and you beg for death because of the, the the way the devil can bastardize your body the bible says he kept his bones so that none of them are broken have you read that in your bible that's what we call shalom it's a covenant of peace nothing missing nothing broken hallelujah and he said peace i give you he was not talking of quietness he means i give you an ability to be undisturbed my peace i give unto you not that the not as the world gives so you can stand up tall and people are asking you what is the basis you are just talking nonsense listen i was in the city of york five days to 9 11 on the 7th 7th of september 2001 i think that was when the first disastrous strike of the enemy i was in the town i was in the middle of all of these things are you getting my point in my little life i have seen a lot of things when the plane crash that was going to happen some years ago i think last year two years ago i was on my way to worry i could feel that spirit of death see it's not that he chooses a particular place. They are bloodthirsty spirits that just keep hoping something will work. When, because we had problem landing. And then we landed and we went to worry. I knew something was wrong. On my way back, I, I flew to Kano. While we were in the air, that was when the, uh, the, the plane crash was happening. So many people were calling me and because my phone was switched, they thought that ah, something happened. Paul will go to a city, they will kill him. As soon as they leave, he will get up. <laughs> Mystery man. Yeah, it's in your Bible. Paul died many times. He will just lie down. And once they move, he will just get up. Don't get excited for nothing. Do you believe it? I remember a time when I saw in a vision, I saw my mother's coffin. I knew it was over. I saw people there crying. I saw them. And I got up. Ah, I found it. There is a lady here. I'm sure she may be part of the people here. She used to be, when she was an unbeliever, she, used, she had one serious sickness, infirmity. And she was in the hospital. She told me that every time it was around maybe three to four, she would see the spirit of death. It would enter the world. You know how doctors walk around. She didn't know it was death. But this particular man will just enter and walk around to several beds. Once you hear crying, you are there. Oh, death, where is your sting? I have met the spirit of death once. Face to face in my life. Let me tell you that story quickly and then we pray. I was in secondary school. And the way we arrange our beds, I was close to the door. Listen, I'm being very sincere with you. I didn't know it was the spirit of death. While I was sleeping, 
very cold. I saw, you know how these films where they have these people that put on hood, like knights, all these kinds of people. That's how it looked. I woke up. I was not in a vision, brothers and sisters, the same way I'm looking at you like this. He was walking around on the floor as though looking for someone. And then while it, everybody was deep asleep, which was mysterious, there was no light. And then while it was about to go out, I was looking at it, it was looking at me. When it was about to turn, I looked at it. Very dark. It just dodgy eyes. You cannot see it. Some of you who have watched that film, Lord of the Rings, you know how those, those guys are, those kings, that's how it is. How do you think those people go to this place? Never had a conversation. But today, I know I will meet it many times in many miracle services and in my travels across. And I've made up my mind I will stamp it every day of my life. You must make that determination because death is real. Are you getting what I'm saying? The thing of death is real. If you joke with what I'm telling you, you will be alive in the morning. Ten minutes later, you are out. Take men of courage and audacity. Who is God speaking to today? Fear not, brothers and sisters. Not the arrows of terrorism. There is a prophetic destiny to this nation. And the soul of this nation is already with God. Beyond the reach of anything. I shared this thing when I was preaching in, in GFM Crusade in Abuja. That's the reason why Nigeria has the letter Y on the rivers. It's an imprint of the signature of the word Yahweh that God is in charge. Listen, upon this nation. Yes, it's not, it has nothing to do with Lord to God. That was a writing, Isaiah 18, a land whose rivers divide. God wrote his name there. Listen, you know why he used the waters? Go and read your Bible. Water has always symbolized abundance. And it has always symbolized the echo of God's voice. The voice of God upon the waters is mighty. Hallelujah. So many things will happen in this nation. Let me tell you. You see the thing happening? Bible says, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine in vain things? The church needs to pray. And we need to realize that our prayers can be whole evil. Let's not just sit down powerless and hope that nothing will happen. Are you getting my point? And then number two, walk the principles of the kingdom. And brothers and sisters, you can walk fine, you can walk alive, you can live strong. Refuse to die. It's a choice. Choose life. He said, I set before you. Is that true? Blessing and cursing. I didn't say the other three parts because obedience to parents, you already know that, right? And then your assignment. These are the three other factors that govern longevity. Your choice, choosing life, obey your father and your mother that your days will be long and it will be well with you. And then finally, I shall not die but live to declare. Are you ready to pray now? Rise up on your feet. Let's do some prayer even if it's just for five minutes. Hallelujah. Please spare yourself 3-3. Three, three. We are going to pray. Before we pray for you, we are going to intercede for this country. 3-3. Three, three. Come on now. Let's pray. I call for that priest in you. Because we are about to pray. Spare yourselves and let's pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Shekete Papa. Pray for Zaria. Pray for Kaduna State. That's your Jerusalem. We stay the power of evil and death and terrorism. We command as ambassadors. Shekete Pokotopa. We challenge thrones. We challenge yokes. We challenge spells. Every manifestation of the spirit of death, of the sword, of the wickedness of men. 
We command those spirits. Rekete koto poko topa. Rente leke prosa. Embrekete tekete papa papa. We cause the powers in the heavens. We cause the powers. We cause the activities of necromancers. The activities of sorcerers. The activities of wizards. Make a poroto pakaya. He makes the diviners mad. A pretekete nepa. He causes the wisdom of the wise to go backward. We pray in the name of Jesus. We challenge ten over Saria, over Kaduna, over the north, over Nigeria. We rebuke you. We are the apostolic voices that cry, restore, restore, restore. You will not take the souls of men. We forbid you by the hand of God. We forbid you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We forbid you. We forbid you. We forbid you. We pray for the peace of Saria. We pray for the peace of Kaduna State. We pray for the peace of the North. We pray for the peace of our dear nation. God's own nation. With the signature of His Majesty upon the borders of our nation. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? Oh death, where is your sting? Hallelujah. 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 Listen, I want you to rebuke the spirit of death. You now know it's a spirit. Cast it away from our environment. Cast it away from your family. It will not come upon the head of any of your loved ones. Go ahead and speak. I cause death over this territory, over my family. My loved ones are covered. There is a shield. There is a shield. That rider upon a pale horse will never find entrance, not by accident, not by sickness, not by pestilence, not by plague. I break the power of death. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. I'd like you to plead the blood of Jesus across the territories like the lintel of the houses and upon your life and your family. Go ahead and plead the blood. We invoke the power of the blood. We invoke the mystery of the blood. The mystery of the blood. The mystery of the blood. Pray, Koinonia, over Zaria. We invoke the mystery of the blood. Over Kaduna State, we invoke the mystery of the blood. Over Nigeria, we invoke the mystery of the blood. Over our families, we command the blood. 
the power of the blood. We are sealed with the blood unto protection, unto perseverance, unto preservation, unto health, unto wellness. Pray. He said, my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone forth from my mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to pray. It says, I give you power. I give you authority. Hallelujah. I give you authority. Exousia. I bring you into an office and I give you the backing of that office. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. And in the name of Jesus, you are going to release life everywhere. Everywhere. In your life, go ahead. Stretch your hands across the north, the south, the east, the west. Go ahead and begin to prophesy life. Go ahead. We speak life. We speak life. 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 We prophesy life to the borders of this city. We prophesy life. Life. We come in the authority of the Lord Jesus. Life. Life. In all the 36 states of the Federation, we speak life. 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 We prophesy. We release the spirit of life. We prophesy life. We speak life. 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 In the name of Jesus. We are life giving spirits. We command life. 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 Health. Vitality. Hallelujah. Look up, we're rounding up. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now let me explain to you what you just did. Verse 2. For the law that activates the spirit of life can do something it can set men free. There is a principle that activates the operation. Are you seeing it now? When it comes to conquering sin and death, there is a spiritual law. He said it's called the law of the spirit of life that is resident in Christ Jesus. For the law. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points. You are going to invoke the operation of this law in your life and say, in My life, right now, the law of life, the spirit of life, begins to work. Every dead organ, hear the word of the Lord. Every infirmity, the spirit of life, the spirit of life, the spirit of life. Holy Spirit, manifest as the spirit of life in my body no cancer no HIV no Ebola virus no infirmity the spirit of life activated 
is a law. It needs to be activated. The law of the spirit of life. The law of the spirit of life that is resident in Christ Jesus. Immunes me. Sets me free from the oppression that brings sin and death. I choose life. I choose life in my body. I choose life. Hallelujah. 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 Psalm 91. Psalm 91. From verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Next verse. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flyeth by day. Next verse. Nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasted in noonday. Next verse. A thousand shall fall by thy side. And ten thousand by thy right side, but none shall come near, near you. Say it shall not come near me. Say it, it shall not come near me. Now, in the next one minute, with every strength you have, you know all the weapons that this spirit uses accident, whatever, come against them. You are far from my dwelling. No accident. Not to my life, not to my family, not to God's people. I cause that spirit. Pray. Shake a pop No death, no accident, not by the sword, not by the arrows of wicked men, not by gunshots of robbers and wicked men. There is a spiritual immunity at work in my life, at work in my family. stand together that the hand of the Lord had done this and if it cannot be done the Holy One of Israel had created it to create means to make out of nothing what needs to be moved should be moved what needs should be brought to be brought what is not there should be created 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 
carry carry a a potato wrap it somewhere make sure that there's no air there's nothing leave it there for a few days in spite of the fact that there's no air it will still rot and when you open the rot you will still see worms inside how they got there is a miracle that's the same way no matter how the enemy closes every access God says when did I start needing a runway when did I start needing ladder to come to the earth when did I start needing a loudspeaker for creation to hear me I am creator when God speaks it doesn't matter where it is even if the bones in the valley of Ezekiel are under the earth when his voice comes echoed by the voice of the prophet the Bible says bone came out listen carefully if you don't believe what I'm teaching you are wasting your time here tonight take your eyes away from the mountains and say Lord you are going to recreate my life there are things you will have to turn tonight around for me like the streams of the Negev when you read further it says that those that 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 sow in tears will reap in joy he didn't just say those that sow money you can sow prayer and he told you the prayer to pray turn again my captivity like the streams of the Negev in the last few months I have been so passionate about calling forth the creative power of God to assist men I am learning afresh again after many years that God can help men. No matter who you are, if God does not assist you, start crying because life will beat you down to your knees and veto whatever you think is a basis of confidence. He said some trust in horses and some chariots, but we, there, is, there are a group of people that would trust in the name of our God. I trust God tonight to change our lives. I trust God tonight to move in a way. Until it marvels you, it is not yet a notable miracle. Scattered here tonight are men and women alongside the challenges and the obstacles that mock God in our lives. We have come from far and near. Many of us made tremendous sacrifices. The question is, do you believe? That this God that we serve, that this God can choose by his wisdom and by his love and mercy to visit a family, to visit a man, that God looks at you and says, I have decided to come to you. I've decided to hold your hand. I've decided to lift you. I've decided to give you a testimony. God comes to a beloved sister and says, my daughter, they have laughed at you. Now they are ready to laugh with you like Sarah. I have come to uphold you. I have come to wipe your tears. I have come to prove to men that the rejected stone can become the chief cornerstone. You are called of God, but it's as if you are not called. No anointing, no results, no testimony. No one placing a demand on your grace. But something happens to you. God says, I'm coming to assist you. Hold my hands. God assists us by asking us to give him our hands. Do you know why? Because until your hand is holding him, he cannot move. You see, let me tell you this. Your hand holding him is proof that you trust that he will move. When your hand is still busy trying to walk it your way, you don't qualify for his help. When he wants to help you, he says, place your hand upon my hand. And you are now going to use your faith from hence, not your hand. Let me be the one using my hand to clear the way. Let me be the one to make a way in the wilderness. Let me be the one to make Pharaoh give you gold. I can give you gold by creating, but let's make a caricature out of Pharaoh. Pharaoh, you are the one who will give that gold. There is a name God is called, the Father of Spirits. Understand the revelation behind that name. Every human being is a spirit. He resides in a body. But God is the Father, the author. Every spirit hailed from him. It was out of his spirits that every spirit came about. 
and the Bible says he's the father of spirits, meaning it is within his power to manipulate every human spirit to cause his purposes to come to pass. Any and every. I spoke to a man this morning before leaving. Um, very touching. The man stood, he had been trying to see me and then at the airport he was there with his children and I looked at the man, all his children. One could not pay his school fees for four years. Final year had written his last exam but because of school fees they are taking him back to 200 level because he couldn't pay. The poor girl, the daughter was there, the man was there standing and I said, this is the signature of Satan. When Satan comes to your life, you can know he has a signature. He will stamp it on your family. Do your worst. He will stamp it on your destiny. Do your worst. Stamp it on everything around your life. And when God comes to, he will use his hand and erase it. And said, let me put my own and see who, what devil will come to take it out of you. I prayed for that man with all my heart. I prayed for him passionately. In that state of poverty and penury, the children and the man, they put together a seed. I, I, I said, can I ever accept this? I, I collected the seed. I prayed with all my heart. And then I said, look, I, I place favor. May your seed become a tray. Let me put something upon it for you. It's called the favor of God. Go back with this anointing and let it turn your life around. That's the works of darkness. Some of us are seated here right now. Our loved ones are in such kind of chaos. Satan. When Satan does a thing, you don't need to ask who did it. He does it so clear that men will know it's his finger. Please don't confuse the works of darkness with the works of God. The works of darkness is darkness. The works of God is light. That's why we're here. To disagree with Satan and insist until we see his power prevail over our lives. Is God speaking to us tonight? The captivity of Zion. The captivity in your family. The captivity in your life. What is that obstacle that stands before you on the next level? You see it, but to touch it, it looks like there is a resistance. There is a limitation. We are going to pray. Are you ready to pray tonight? And then I begin to minister to you by the Spirit. Oh God, turn again my captivity like the streams of the naked. Lift your voice and cry. Believe me, brothers and sisters, when you pray, God hears you. In Palagato, Sikapanagadaba, Breketeke Padaba, Kosekateli Gada, In Pato Sikata, Eko Ton again the captivity. Mam Breketeke Banakata, Brekusakata, Kapereke, In Pakato Sikaparagade, Zakata, Eta, Breketeke Padaba Katabarigadibo, In Pata Bretes Teke Banagadabosa, In Brekete Sakata. Hallelujah. I'd like you to begin to mention by faith the things that must live your life this night, not tomorrow. Open your mouth and pray. Go ahead. <laughs> Mention what must live your life tonight. Rakapata, Brekete Katosa, in Kapanda Kate Kata, Rekepata, Limon Sipalamana, Lekata Brakata Sekete, in Patata, Rekutata, Sipalamana, in Protosopata Brekete, Alabado Sikata, 
Hallelujah. Someone sent a few weeks ago, someone sent a very humbling text message. Please help those under the anointing there. A few weeks ago, someone sent a very humbling text message to my phone. Out of seven graduates, nobody has ever been called for employment. Not even, not, I'm not talking of, I'm, I said, I'm, interview. Seven graduates, no one called for interview. And the gentleman, according to what he sent me, he said he went to bed in the night to, and he just slept. And that's what he said. He said he saw me in the dream. I came and I prophesied. It was like a koinonia service. I laid hands on him. And I mentioned the name of an organization that will call him. True story. He said he woke up physically with an alert from that organization to come for an interview. Now, I don't know whether or not they have given him the job. I don't know that part. But that's God at work. From a dream, prophecy. You wake up physically with the alert. You didn't apply. Ah. Listen, listen. Don't let men fool you. This God, ba, let me tell you, when God decides to help you, don't tell him how he would do it. Your ways, his ways are higher, higher than our ways. His thoughts, higher than our thoughts. When, when you see, it's an act of faith to let God choose how to surprise you. Yours is to place a demand on his integrity by faith and let him choose how to rise and bless you. You may be asking God for a cup of tea, whereas he's coming with a hamper for you. Lord, one cup of tea and I'm grateful. And God says, no, if I give you a cup of tea, man can also give you. Let me come with a hamper in a way that you will know this is me. we together three things I want to tell you we'll pray one more time number one God can act very fast he looks slow until he rises from his throne to help you listen to what I'm telling you don't get used to the fact that just because sometimes it looks like God is too slow God can act mysteriously fast I was watching a documentary. I like watching documentaries um, and on, on a, a, a National Geographic channel. And then they were showing how these animals, all these, these sea mammals, how they eat one another. And sometimes with lightning speed, a giant creature can, in fractions of a second, just dissect another animal. And I said, wow. So don't be deceived by the weight. That it is a giant creature doesn't mean it is slow. That your God is mighty, that heaven is his throne and the earth is his full stool, doesn't mean it would take him 10 years to bend down to touch you. He can touch you from his throne and you will feel it from the earth. God. We are talking God here. Number one, God can act fast. So that you don't limit God and say, Lord, I know you will act, but um, no problem. No. Number two, Listen very carefully. God can surpass your wildest imagination. Now, it's difficult to understand, but you must believe it. God can surpass your wildest imagination. He can. He can. So that it's good that you bring your petitions before him, but that you allow your faith to expand to the capacity that can receive everything that God decides to give you. And then number three, Satan and all the limitations that stand before you, listen carefully, have been defeated, not will be defeated, have been defeated. What happens in a service like this is an establishing of that victory. It's difficult to understand, but you must believe this. Because the reality of our circumstances will not allow us to believe this is a fact. But it's true because it came from the mouth of God himself. That it is finished verdict is what we have come to enforce. So that you don't stand and look at the limitation that stands before you. And now begin to ask yourself questions. But how will God do this? Promise, how is God going to do this? 
if God does it this way, there's already a blockage here. If God follows this way, it will have to be five years before it happens. If God uses this method, my uncle already hates me. And God says, you only gave me three methods. I have methods as infinite as my names. I can use anything. I can use a fish to give you coins. I can use a donkey to speak to you. I can use a bird to bring you bread. It doesn't always have to be men. It just has to be material bodies. I can use anything. Are we together? So tonight as we pray, why are we here? You have to understand. Number one, we are here. We are here to clear the way. The forces. Remember, there will always be forces that contend against the word of God. We are here to challenge them. Because most times those forces stand our way. They contend with prophecy. When the force that stands against your destiny is cleared away, you will be surprised how sometimes within minutes your testimony comes. Number two, we are here to allow the anointing of the Holy Spirit to produce possibilities in our lives. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is his force, is his instrument for producing change. He creates by his anointing. It is his word, but that word must be anointed. Are we together now? The word of God without an anointing on it for 30 years could not heal anybody. Could not bless anybody. The word just roamed around the streets of Nazareth. But when the word became anointed, it became Christos. The anointed. So the word of God is coming to your life. I want you to be very sensitive. Whether it is the prophetic word, whether it's an instruction to pray, whether it is the deliverance session, don't just watch people fall and roll and do all of that. Let your heart connect. Be angry. There is an obstacle for sure. You go to bed in the night and all kinds of strange spirits molest you. You get up and say, it's all right. How can it be all right? If it's all right, who invited them to your life? Good things about to happen to you all of a sudden. Your enemies reach your destiny helpers before you and they give a bad word that closes your door, recycles your pain again. Then for many of us, what you need is that the anointing of the Holy Spirit will call forth the men, the men component. God helps by bringing men. God can agree with you. Men can disagree. You will still suffer. God agreed for David to become king. Samuel refused. David remained in the wilderness until Samuel agreed. Men can stop your breakthrough. It's not just demons. Men can stop your breakthrough. And not all men are castable. There are men who are gates, even though they are hedonistic. God doesn't cast them. He gives you access to their heart. When a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies. There are some enemies you can't drive because they are still gates. Are we together now? Lord, I'm ready for you tonight. Lift your voice and pray. pray. Lord, I'm ready for you. This is my family. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah.
glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let me do the singing. I'm going to sing this song once. I want those who are under the anointing while I sing. This is the instruction God is giving me. This same song. You guys have done your good music. Let me prophesy now with you. You'll be surprised to see what will happen. In here, outside, as I'm singing this song. If that anointing finds you, as you come out here, begin to rejoice. Because it is strange breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bring them out. Shabalakato sabadasiata. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No power can stand it. Glory to the Father. The forces must let you go. Hey, hallelujah. There's authority in the song that I'm singing. Hallelujah. Seated on the floor. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to my Father. You are seated on the floor. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. They are leaving you now. They are leaving you now. 
I'm speaking by the Spirit. They are leaving you now. There are chains over you living now. There are chains leaving you now. I'm ministering by the Spirit. There are chains are leaving you now. Even the lawful captives. Chains. I'm seeing chains breaking from the hands of men. Chains be broken. The worship team already prepared our hearts. I command the chains to be broken by the authority of this kingdom. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. I'm commanding chains to break. Bring them out. The anointing of the spirit is breaking chains. Overflow one, two, three online. Chains. Chains of captivity, all kinds of bondages, every force of darkness. It's time for you to go. It's time for you to go. Release their destinies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Now listen, God is giving me an instruction. Hold on. If there is any power associated with your family, you will know now by the fire that falls on you. This is what the Lord is telling me. I'm about to pray that if there is anything that is demonic responsible for the challenge of your family, Get ready now, because I see a wind of fire moving from this place right there, outside. I declare it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the fire of the Spirit visit men and women and families now. Hold on. Listen, I'm still praying. Listen to me. The Bible says that Paul was at a place, it was cold in the night, and they put wood together. When they set the, a viper was there, but it could not be seen. But when they set fire on the wood, the fire exposed the viper. I declare, Shabbatos Katadia, by the fire of the Spirit, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, every viper. Hiding in any family, hiding in any destiny, be exposed now. 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 Every viper, every snake, scorpion. Where are the forces fighting your advancement? Forces fighting men's advancement. The Lord is judging them now. Judging them now. Judging them now. It's time for you to move forward. I command judgment. 
on the forces fighting your advancement. I command judgment on the forces fighting your advancement. Overflow one, lift your hands, please. Everyone in overflow one, lift your hands. The Lord is ministering to me. Overflow one, lift your hands. There is a mighty deliverance that is coming there. At the count of three, overflow one, I want you to shout Jesus. As you shout Jesus, I'm seeing gates with chains breaking. Are you ready now? One, two, three. lady that lady going back I'm looking at a lady but in the spirit I'm watching I'm not saying you're a bad girl my dear all I'm seeing is a serpent I'm not seeing a human being in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands I expose that serpent now glory to the father Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray a very interesting prayer. Don't mind me. Just allow me. I'm ministering under the anointing. I'm going to say exactly what I'm hearing in the spirit. And if it doesn't sound logical, don't worry. Just let me do the prayer. Snakes be judged. Snakes be judged. Snakes be judged. Snakes. Serpents of the night be judged. Serpents of the night be judged. Serpents of the night be judged. God is against you. Ebenezer, the helper of man, is against you. Snakes, I say it again. Be judged. Be judged. No rest, no peace. Be judged. Snakes. Be judged. I'm seeing a lady vomiting something. That's what I'm seeing in a vision right now. I don't know what it is I'm seeing, but in the name of Jesus Christ, God is releasing people. There is victory. God is helping people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is opening my eyes. And I'm seeing fire. Not impartation. Fire consuming people's head. And God is saying his restoration of lost glory. That's what I'm seeing. Restoration. Something that used to be in your life and all of a sudden faded away I'm seeing fire coming on people's heads where are they oh God I stretch my hands now let the fire bring restoration 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 help them please restoration 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 I command restoration of every lost glory. Even the lawful captive shall be delivered. All those who are out in front under the anointing here, I declare every legal grounds upon which any spirit is operating in your life at the count of three by the mystery of the blood, it leaves you now one, Two, three, go, 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 go out of their lives.
in the name of Jesus out of their lives when the blood speaks nothing else speaks again victory by the blood of the eternal covenant victory by the blood of the eternal covenant hallelujah the Lord is showing me a family here and I'm seeing that the father in that family, I don't know if he's out of pressure, but went to a herbalist and they gave him something to go and bury in the house. He may not even know it. This is something that happened a while ago. And whatever it is, seemed to backfire. When it came to money issues, he didn't go and pay, like give the herbalist whatever it is. That's what God is showing me now. And I'm seeing that because of that, every door in that family, everything just closed. I'm going to pray. Lord, wherever, whoever represents that family here, whether inside or outside or online, I'm praying right now by the mercy of the God of heaven, whatever enchantment and activities of darkness invoked by those herbalists, I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. Who is Rebecca? Rebecca. Rebecca, like Becky. Rebecca. Rebecca, I'm hearing a name, Rebecca. Rebecca. You are seated on the throne. Stand up. You are Rebecca. That's the person I'm talking about. Come. Stand up. You are seated on the throne. Madam, where are you coming from? You came from Abuja. Yes, I'm seeing you in a vehicle from Abuja yes, coming. You came alone? And my younger brother and my cousins, they live in Zaria. You, One came from Kano. My you, but you came from Abuja. Yes, I came from What's Abuja. What's your name? Asmao Rebecca. 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 Asmao. Come. Yes. It's time for your victory. Lift your hands. There is. Let her go now. I command the spirit oppressing you. You have come to Koinonia, the place where God dwells. In the name of Jesus Christ. The power that fights you. In the name of Jesus Christ, this woman is going to return with very strange testimonies. Mama, you are Rebecca. I'll pray with you. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you. The Lord has located you and end comes to your captivity. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Where are you from? Where are you from? Please help this woman. Are they, are they, this mama, are they Rebecca? Mama, are you Rebecca? Yes, I'm Rebecca. Huh? You are Rebecca, mama? Okay. This one, so I'm, I'm going to pray for you. Sometimes God gives a word and then I'm, I'm talking to you now, my dear. Where are you from? Samnaka. State of origin. Region. Kaduna. You are from Kaduna State. Yes, Come, sir. I want to pray for you. There's trouble in your family. You are in need of the power of God desperately. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bring to end this captivity. The lady that is going back, tap her, just tell her to look at me. Just look at me. It's over now, in Jesus' name. All of you are Rebecca. My dear, salvation is coming. An anointing is leaving me to you. And it's for your family. From next month, you will start hearing strange testimonies. Open doors. Mama, you are Rebecca. Who else is Rebecca? All of you are Rebecca. I'm going to pray for you. Hi. Ma, I have to pray for you. Yes, ma'am. The spirit of death is following your family. I'm, I'm not a prophet of doom. I want to pray for you. 
Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands over our mommy. Help her, please. I command the spirit of death. One of you here, um, I don't know which of you, but I'm seeing an anointing coming on one of you on here. There's one of you, an anointing is coming on you. Um, the Lord is bringing deliverance. Right now, you can't stand it. It's, it's the power of God. One of you, an anointing is coming on you for strange deliverance. Mama, be free in the name of Jesus Christ. Hi. There's, there's serious witchcraft. Excuse me, just a minute. I command that spirit to leave this lady now. You must go. You must let her go. In the name of Jesus Christ. He, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. This, will, this mama doesn't speak English. I think she speaks Yoruba. She, she speaks Yoruba. Who is? Ejimi, can you come up somewhere? Just tell her the Lord is bringing breakthrough. You can whisper it in her ear. Just have to go. It's your mother. Come. The Lord is breaking. The Lord is breaking a yoke. The yoke of delay. As I just mentioned delay, I just saw fire just left me. As I just mentioned that word delay, I'm about to pray on it. But since, since I just saw the fire, let me just do what I saw in the spirit. The spirit of delay, be judged now. The spirit of delay, I say it again, be judged now. The spirit of delay, the spirit of delay, be judged now. The spirit of delay. Open your heart. Open your heart and pray. The spirit of delay. Be judged now. Any kind of delay. The spirit of delay. Be judged now. The spirit of delay. Be judged now. Be judged now. Be judged now. breakthrough for your family. God is bringing breakthrough. Mama, God is bringing breakthrough. Your son will tell you in Yoruba, in the name of Jesus Christ. There's something on you that makes wrong people come to you. I have to pray for you. Are you I'm looking at you. Very bad people come to you for bad reasons. No serious person. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to start bringing long. It's not there is something. There's a spirit in you that attracts those kind of people. They will never pass you and go free. They must turn back. And this thing is destroying your life. Hold my hands. Shout Jesus. Look at this. So you just think it's just love. You are in love with a beautiful girl. It's not just love. Out now. Go. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. I've not seen this in a long time. The Lord is showing me a map again. And this map is going to Kogi State. I'm laying my hands now. Kogi State. Let that anointing begin to find people within that region. Now I'm praying. You come within that region. Let the anointing find you. Deliverance for that region now. Shatakoto Seketea. Kogi State. Deliverance now. From any strange power. Any force of darkness. If you don't know your state of origin and you are from there, you can know it now by the anointing. In the name of Jesus, anyone from that region, that's the region the anointing of the Spirit is focusing on now. I command deliverance now. The strong men within those regions, let God's people go now. 
release them right now. The spirits of the grave, the spirits of ancestry, I curse you by the God of heaven. your hands. We'll pray for the sick shortly. But there are people here why God brought you tonight is to receive the healing anointing. I just saw it. I don't know where they are. They are in almost every overflow there are representations. Lord Jesus, anyone who you brought here to receive the anointing for healing, let that anointing come. This is your moment now. Receive it now. Ordained by God to receive this anointing today ordained by God to receive the grace for healing I'm seeing that anointing coming on two people in worship team two people in worship team that anointing that grace hallelujah glory to the Lamb the anointing to heal the sick you don't just pray for the sick. There is an anointing. I say it again, the anointing to bring healing, to transport the power of God from the throne to their lives. Receive that anointing right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mama, come please. Please help her. She's not running by herself. It's under the anointing. Mama, I see a new dimension of healing coming on you. A new dimension, oh, just hold her. A new dimension of healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah! This mama is going to pray for the sick and you'll be surprised. There is an unusual anointing upon you for barrenness. For barrenness. I'm praying. Help that lady, please. In the name of Jesus. Receive that anointing, mama, in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace, the grace, in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is asking me to stand in front of you. Just to stand in front of you, that's the instruction I'm getting. The light shines out of darkness. God is removing something from your chest. I'm seeing something leaving you. I don't know what this is, but in the name of Jesus Christ, I stand in front of you. Be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. All of you who are standing here in the name of Jesus, I agree with you. And I declare, come, let me touch your child. I'm going to pray for favor. When you hear me say favor, lift your hands and receive. You need it in your life. Too many people have taken advantage of you. Even as... I'm seeing people laughing. That's, that's why I just stopped. This is very strange. A strange anointing is a sign of victory in the spirit. That's what the Lord is showing me. Strange. It's an anointing. Very strange anointing. You see, if you are not spiritual and you don't understand why God does these things, it's not showmanship. The Bible says he's, he filled their mouth with laughter. I read it for you. You can't stand it. It's something that laughter you see is warfare. It's not just laughing hysterically. I release it. The families that is for, the individuals that is for, laughter is a weapon in the spirit. It disarms the enemy. Sh 
So my dear, when I'm praying for favor, please you stand to receive it, eh? But I bless your child. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There's someone, your family member has been missing. This is more than one year. Who is that person? Because the person who is missing is still alive. Let's, if she's the one, who is missing? Don't come and tell lies here. Are you sure? My father, I your talked father, to you about it before. You told me about yes, it? Yes, and you remember. prayed. Where, what happened? When last did you see him? 2015, August, Saturday. He told me he was coming and that was the end. From where? From Edo Stage, Benin. And you've not seen him? I've not seen him since date. We are still in search of him. How about you? My cousin sister. Your cousin sister is missing? Yes. All these people, they are, leave them. Their loved ones are... Just find out once they are, don't please, if, if you are not related to the people, don't please don't come here. We are going to pray generally. If you if you do it like that, there will be chaos. How about you? Uh, my in-law. Your in-law? Yes, sir. What do you mean your in-law? For any good state. Okay. All of you, your loved ones are missing. Your loved one is missing. Who is that? Your younger brother yes, missing since when? 2014. 2014. Yes. They've not seen him. Yes, sir. You see how Satan works? How can somebody leave home? For you to sympathize with people, put them in your shoes. Imagine that your child left home and said, Mommy, I'm coming, and never comes back. I'm prophesying to you three years. Your child went and said, Mommy, I'm coming. Until today. Come, Mama. Give her the mic. Hold on, Mama. Your, ch your child is alive. This boy, you see, are they twins or is he the same person? This one. He's, he's the only one. What but happened to him? He, he left school. I put him in ABU. He refused to call him. He refused his taking drops, going about lying to people that his parents are dead. All over at times they call me in the police station or your state, for that court that is arrested. I don't know how they set him free at times. You see, our, honestly, let me speak to us young people. It's, it's okay, mama. It's your only son. Only son. One, one girl, one boy. That's all. Yes. You, that's how you know it's a spirit. Because the devil sat down and saw that this boy is, will bring joy to the mother. And then the devil decided to, it, will the lady not marry and go? Huh? He's very intelligent. In school, he was in the ABU. He left the school. I'm going away. What's his name? Awal is his name. Awal. Awal. We are going to pray. Like a month ago, from what God is showing me, this boy had problem with police. They were smoking. In the they were they smoking Igbo. Police came and drugs. packed them with he his friends. Drugs. This is what, Mama, let me talk to you now. I'm the one talking to you. I know. You see, when you see me pray about this, this drug, this thing, that drug is a spirit. It's more than with due respect to doctors and this thing, it's not just because of the physical thing it gives. I'm telling you, that thing is a spirit. If you have a child or you know someone that takes that thing, counseling is not the way out. There is a real spirit that must be casted out. Are we together? Some of you here right now, seated in this program, you love God, but that, what, what did they call it? Codeine. Again. Mama, 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 don't worry. It's, 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 it's okay. It's okay. Because you see the way these boys are desperate for this money. They will coin every kind of story and beg you and lie. You give them 100 naira. You, once you give them enough to take this thing, they will disappear and go and rubbish it. Let me tell you, there is none of those boys that is bad in themselves. There is none of those girls that are bad in themselves is the influence of spirits. Nobody will be killing himself and eating death like that every day.
Mama, you have come for miracle service. God will do something about it. Who is this, my brother? It's my mom's younger brother. Your mom's over, younger brother? Yes, for missing. over 10 years, we have not seen him. 10 years, yes. we've not seen him. Oh, pray. How about you, sir? My elder brother. You're the brother. pastor that came from Warrior. Yes. Okay. From Delta State. From Delta State, okay. Uh, my elder brother was missing about 20 years ago. We really forget, uh, forgot about him in Ghana. He was in Ghana and he's, and he's yes, missing. Yes. Okay, let me pray with you. It's an instruction. Because some of the situations now, they are even very difficult situations. I, I don't know in myself whether some of them are alive or they've gone to be with the Lord or whatever. But my job is to pray. Because God has instructed me to pray. Mama, please stop crying. You came here with faith in your heart. Let me tell you, you must eat the fruit of your labor. And I'm saying this, I'm using this mother as a point of contact, not just to every mother here, but to all our mothers. The force that wants them to labor and die in pain, go to their graves in pain, we challenge that force now. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's an error to sow and someone reap. In the name of Jesus, every true mother that has labored to sow, may they reap in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying. Everyone here whose loved one is missing and alive and walking in the earth here, I connect them back now in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for you. I connect them back now in the name of Jesus. Jesus called Lazarus. And when he called Lazarus, he came out. I call them by their various names in the spirit. For as long as they are alive and walking on this earth, I put a desire in them to reconnect to their family. Those who have been jailed because, you see, some of these people, let's be very fair, some of them, they, they smuggle their way out of the country. They go to Libya, they go to all of these places. Some of them go to do prostitution, unfortunately. Some of them go because they want to make money. Someone tells them, come, travel, and all of that. So some of them, they may even be in cells in some of these places you may never know. But regardless of the case, for as long as they are on earth, we cry for mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, may they be reconnected back to you. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Please go back to your seat rejoicing. Go back to your seat rejoicing. Go back to your seat rejoicing. I hope someone is holding that person shouting at them. My friend, come. You are doing your ushering work, but I will pray for you before you go back. Eh? Look at me. I'm looking at you. The Lord is telling me to tell you, August 7th is a month that breakthrough will begin in a very strange way for you. Hold my hands. August 7th. Don't forget. Write it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this gentleman. You have revealed to me August 7th. I prophesy to him. In the name of Jesus Christ, may God change your life within that time. May God change your life within that time. May God change your life within that time. I'm seeing a ring, a ring in the spirit. I'm seeing a ring in the spirit. I'm seeing a ring. Ordinary when you see a ring, you will think maybe God is saying he's bringing marriage. Maybe marriage to families. But this one, God is delivering people from spirit entities with all kinds of fraternities over their lives. Right now, I stretch my hands. That's why it's important to let the Holy Ghost interpret things. I know that many of you may not believe what I'm praying, but you just allow me to pray. Every spirit entity covenanting to you as a husband or as a wife, I set fire on this ring I see in the spirit. Be free from them now. Ladies, be free now. I command those spirit entities to release you. In the
the name of Jesus Christ. For the gentleman, I command freedom for you now. From any entity laying claims over you. You go to bed and they come to you in the night. They try to molest you. They try to sleep with you. They can use faces of people you know or you don't know or animals. Anyone under the sound of my voice who any stranger comes to him in the night while you sleep, fire is coming on you now. 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 I command that they let you go now. For some of us, when good things are about to happen, just when you are about to get it, you go in the night and someone comes to sleep with you in that dream. As soon as you wake up from that experience, no matter what it is, it's gone. Whether it is favor, whether it is breakthrough, fire is still speaking. I'm praying. At the count of three, oh God, you who is a mighty deliverer, I pray that your anointing will search for these ones and bring them deliverance now. One, two, three. Let there be deliverance for you now. Deliverance for you now from any spirit entity laying claims on your destiny. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This lady with lime, yes, you, come. No. Look at me, look at me. I'm talking about that one with you. Yes, come. Where are you coming from? Benway. Benway State. Look at me. Look at this. Are you seeing? She just stood there. And while I was looking, I just saw a spirit through her look at me and turn the face. Now, it's very funny how these things work. See, one of the prayers you must pray in your life is for the grace of open eyes. If your eyes are closed in this life, and all that is open is your brain, you will be in trouble. Open eyes is not something just for prophets. It's one of the true riches of the kingdom. You must cry that God will open your eyes. Not to see nonsense around, to see something that is destiny molding. Now look at this girl. How will I stand and see someone there and call her out? Imagine that this lady went back like this. To her she will now say, oh God, so this is how you didn't locate me sensitivity, discernment is a priceless spiritual gift. Sensitivity. It comes by praying in the Holy Ghost. It comes by praying in the Holy Ghost. Not wishing. Praying in the Holy Ghost. You activate your organs. You have to pray for a long time in the spirit. For your spirit to be heightened. To be able to perceive spiritual things. Otherwise, you will get into all kinds of error, wrong perception. That you have started seeing things does not mean they are clear. You must continue in the place of prayer until it becomes accurate. I just showed you the thing of ring now. Some of you may see that ring now and then tell somebody, it's, it's not marriage as it were. You see, it was something else, but it's a ring. This lady has bad luck in her life very bad luck. I have to pray for you. She just came quietly standing. This I would have shared the grace and the dear lady will go back and then it will look as if God is not in the place. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing you cough. I'm seeing her cough. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. That she's beginning to cough. I don't know why, what is having to do with coughing. But in the name of Jesus Christ, Shatos Kalabarianda Shibrakia, Kolas Tabata Shita Tufia Tabata, 
Katos Kabarandushti Anakalande Karus Kadipre Haski Yabari Let everything that speaks against you leave now. This lady swallowed something in the dream. Someone came to her, gave her something, and she swallowed in the dream. If you ever say you like this girl, everything in your life goes down immediately. I'm not saying she's a bad girl. Please don't get me wrong. I'm teaching her something here. She's not a bad girl, but this is the operation in her life. There are people, do you know why we minister to people like that? This is what sometimes prophets see, that if they don't get discernment, they go around saying, someone now may not see this correctly and say this girl is a witch. He's not exactly wrong in terms of saying that there is war associated with her life. You can come now and hold her hands as a businessman in two months of relationship. Everything goes down. And she knows she loves God. But if you are not discerning, you will now call the poor girl a witch. And everybody will start running away from her. She's not a witch. There is just a challenge. And then if you also say she's alright like that, and somebody marries her, that guy's life will be torn into pieces. This is the testimony of so many families. It's an uncomfortable truth, but it's true. Human beings carry spirits. They carry presence. Father, liberty for her. The devil is already, ah! Someone in overflow one and overflow three is being delivered from fibroid. 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 I just saw a hand reaching into someone's, like someone's stomach to bring out something. In the name of Jesus Christ, that devil of fibroid, we pray for the sick shortly. We'll be very fast at it. Fibroid is gone now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our time is gone. Can we pray for the sick very quickly? Now listen. I want you, if you are coming here to be prayed for, come full of faith. You don't have to say what is wrong with you. If you are not asked, don't worry. And all of us who are going to pray for the sick, we are going to make this very fast. Are we together? Now, um, as always, overflow one and part of overflow two. Part of overflow two. You will come in here, come and stand in front here. Uh, no, no, not main auditorium, sorry, not overflow one. The main auditorium and then half of overflow two. Allow them to come here. Overflow one, move to your projector stand, please. The remaining part of overflow two and the, those standing at the roadside, you can move to the projector stand. Overflow three, all of you trusting God for healing, please move to your projector stand. We have about 10, 15 minutes to do this very quickly. While we are doing that, ushers and uh, I don't know, whatever, whoever needs to help them, submit your prayer requests very quickly. If you have your prayer request, you are coming out here for healing, come. Come. There is a God that heals. Please, if you have your prayer request, you can lift it up, write it very quickly. No, no, the ushers will collect it. Ushers. And, and then if, if there are not many, PR department can help them. Let's make it snappy or any other department can help them. Let's, let's make it very... We're going to make it very fast. Please and please let there be orderliness once you have been prayed for. We may not have time to take testimonies. We are just going to pray very, very quickly. Hallelujah. Okay, let's see. Um, Ejimi, Ejimi and Benga, overflow three. Two of you can go to overflow three. Um, let's see. Pastor Alpha and Promise overflow one outside. Pastor Femi and Kenny overflow two. Let's do it like that. I'll, I'll pray. I'll pray for the ones here by myself. Hallelujah. Let's pray together. In the name of Jesus, everybody say amen. amen. 
Father, we declare corporately that your healing power will begin to flow. Heal the sick, deliver the oppressed, and in the name of Jesus, bring yourself glory by the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Please make sure while we are praying, the ushers also come to these people in front so that they can have it. We'll be very, very fast so that we finish on time. Thank you, Jesus. You're the name above every other name. Hail Yahweh. Great Yahweh. You're the name above. Yeah. 
Put your hands here, everyone. I hope the requests are all here. If you are yet to submit, you'll just wave it and someone should reach you. Please stretch your hands here and begin to prophesy. It's not a ritual. Declare that everything I've dropped here in the name of Jesus becomes an answered prayer. Please, ushers, make sure. Make sure that we have everyone's request here. Those online connect by faith and praying now. Make sure you are praying. Prophesy. Are you praying? Father, I believe. I believe. If the devil didn't stop your request from getting here, he will not stop it from being answered. Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be miracles. Sharp Krakato Shigadibala. Zebra teka teka te proto superabash. En teka toko to soto para kato shepre teka desh. Kalabara na baseni alabala na bush. I anoint these requests. I anoint them in the name of Jesus. I anoint them by the power of the Holy Ghost. I anoint them in the name of Jesus. Signs and wonders. Breakthroughs, impossible situations, turn things around, oh God. You have declared that you are turning things around. Turn around everyone's captivity. Turn around everyone's captivity. Let there be testimonies. Break the spirit of delay. Break the spirit of delay. In the name of Jesus Christ, we decree and declare. Hallelujah. Every time we do this, we do this one as instructed. And then number two, because it's an opportunity to have everyone's desire and everyone's request here. Father, I stand upon these requests by faith. Turn them into testimonies, oh God. Turn them into testimonies, oh God. Turn them into testimonies, O oh God. Lord, these requests are a representation of the needs of your people. I stand, O oh God, in the name of Jesus on their behalf. And I cry, let fire fall upon this request. And I prophesy to you on account of this request that the Egyptians you see today, in the name that is above all names, may you see them no more forever. I say it again that the Egyptians you see today, may you see them no more forever. Some of you before this month is over, you will return with strange testimonies. It's still two days or a day or so to the end of the month. Between now and even tomorrow, may you return with strange testimonies. Whoever must be judged for this prayer to be answered, may it be so. Whoever must receive a conviction about you between tonight and tomorrow or till whenever for this prayer to be answered, we declare it so in the name of Jesus. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. Put your hands together for Jesus. Lift your hands to receive the prophetic word now. We're rounding up. The miracle service is not complete if you don't receive a prophetic word. Prophecy is powerful. It's powerful. It creates. I release testimonies to your life. Let me say it again because many of you didn't believe it. I release testimonies to your life. 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 The key that you need to open the door for the next level may be handed it over to you in the spirit. The kind of favor that you will need to testify in the name of Jesus. May the God that gives favor to men grant you favor. 
in the name of Jesus. For those in need of restoration, I prophesy, receive restoration. For those in need of an urgent miracle, a miracle that has to happen on time, otherwise it will cost you. I stretch my hands in the name that is above all names. Let it happen to you. Even within 24 hours, let there be that miracle. For those who have never had an opportunity to laugh, every time you want to laugh, something comes and must force you to cry. I announce to you, the season of your laughter begins tonight. Where you have been despised, I place an anointing upon you. And tonight, I call you Beulah and Hepzibah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone here in ministry and things are not working, you are doing your best, but it's just not working. Receive the grace to begin to walk in a greater dimension of signs and wonders. Anyone here in business, in the name of Jesus, you are entering the season of your best days from now. Anyone here trusting God for a job, for you or for your loved ones, between now and the next miracle service, return with your testimony. Return with your testimony. Return with your testimony. Every challenge plaguing your family, not just you, a family thing, everyone is crying for me. Could be patterns, could be whatever it is. I stretch my hands right now. And in the name that is above all names, I bring those patterns to an end now. For those trusting God for financial miracles, your miracle, the area you are trusting God is directly in the area of finances. I agree with you and I release my faith. May the God that prospers men surprise you. Everyone here called barren or standing in for any barren person, return as a mother of joyful children. The anointing that makes things work, the grace for performance, I release that grace upon your life. Everything that is upon your hand now, I command it to work. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I announce to you, let July, from July 1st to July 31st, may it be named a month of strange miracles, strange wonders, strange miracles. Strange wonders, strange miracles, strange wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight for some of you as you sleep, may my God show you the secrets of your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every area where you are trusting God to give you divine direction. In the name of Jesus, every spiritual mechanism that God can use to communicate to you, I declare that let it be so for you. Revelation after revelation. Finally, whoever needs to arise and help you, they already have the capacity. All they need is the willingness. I pray for you. Let me tell you, breakthrough is very easy when your helper likes you. Your helper has the means, but he needs to have the heart. Some have the heart, but they don't have the means. You need both. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus that any man and woman positioned around you that has the ability to help you, I pray that God will put it in their hearts to help you. I speak over your life a new level of spiritual encounters. I say it again, a new level of spiritual encounters. For some of you, I'm holding my Bible as a prophetic act because some of you have divorced this book, not willingly, but by reason of the operation of spirits. The only time you open your Bible is in church or in koinonia. Right now, fall in love with this Bible. Fall in love with the Word of God. 
an appetite for the word of God I release upon you. Every kind of spiritual laziness. You say I wake up to pray by 12 and sleep till 8 in the morning. Or you get up to pray and five minutes you are snoring back. It's an attack. I curse that spirit over your life. Fresh fire upon your prayer altar. In the name of Jesus Christ. We declare peace over Nigeria. We declare peace over the north. We declare peace over Plateau State. We declare peace over Kaduna State. We declare peace over Zaria. Specifically for Zaria, we fortify the spiritual borders of this city. And in the name of Jesus, we declare that no orchestration of darkness will arise to disrupt the peace and serenity of the people. May the angels of the Lord, in the name of Jesus, secure the borders of this city. Secure the borders of the north. And we pray that the perpetrators of wickedness be judged by God in heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are here and you need Jesus desperately. Keep standing, please. You need Jesus desperately, desperately. You're saying, man of God, I need Jesus as a matter of urgency. I have seen the value. I have seen the usefulness of Jesus in my life. Hitherto, every time I hear about Jesus, I, I resent him. I scorn and laugh at those who talk about him. But from tonight's meeting, the Holy Spirit has convicted me. And I testify. And with all humility, I declare that I need him. Second category of people. Man of God, I love Jesus with all my heart. But I know that I need a strengthening in my spiritual life. Things have gone haywire. If God does not help me, there will be no way out for me. You belong to these two categories. Overflow 1, Overflow 2, Main Auditorium. I'd like you to walk out here quickly. Overflow 3, I'd like you to run to your projector stand. Very quickly, I'm counting 1 to 5 and we're done. 1, God bless you. Appreciate them, Koinonia, they are coming. 2, you're still indecisive. It's not good for your destiny. Jesus, I love you. I want to make a genuine decision for you. Three. Please, if they are coming from other overflows, clear the way for them. You are running to Jesus. Don't be ashamed. No man condemns you. You are before his throne of grace to obtain mercy, to obtain grace. We are all products of his mercy and grace. Four. Please come quickly, quickly, double up. Apostle, I'm not sure whether I'm born again or not. Join them. Join them very quickly. I remember coming out for an altar call, but I, I honestly don't know the name of what I'm doing now. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. Koinonia, is this the best you can do for them? Jesus said, ye must be born again. Salvation is non-negotiable. Listen, let me encourage everyone. Koinonia is not the only platform for genuine salvation. The first mission of this ministry is massive salvation of souls. We must seek and save the lost. Not just save the lost when they come to us. We must seek them. Are we together? Because many of them may not be in a position ordinarily where they can receive salvation. We seek them through intercession. We seek them by engaging them in the conversation that leads them to Christ. God bless you. Lift your hands, all of you. Some of you are crying. You are standing before the Lord. Honestly, the Bible says, whoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Say this loud after me. You are making a confession to the God of heaven. Say, Jesus. Say it again. Say, Jesus, I believe in you. That you are the son of God. Tonight, I declare that I need you. I need you in my life. I need you in my destiny. Therefore, I declare that you are my Lord, you are my Savior, you are my King. 
I hand over my life and everything about me to you and to your lordship. I receive eternal life. I receive the spirit of God. And I declare from today until forever I belong to Jesus. I declare that I'm a child of God. The grace to walk in victory is mine. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, thank you. Father, we give you all the glory for drawing these ones. No man can come to you except you draw them. I pray that the grace that keeps men, let that grace keep these ones. The grace that lifts men, let that grace lift them. The grace that secures them, let that grace secure them. In the name of Jesus, I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that the grace to walk in victory be given to you. You will move forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name I pray. Congratulations. Thank you so much for this bold decision. Please, I'd like you to follow this gentleman waving his hands. Just follow them in concert. All of you, there will be a group of people to just talk and pray with you very quickly. All of you, God bless you. Let's honor them. Let's appreciate them. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.